is John T for the Boxing Voice and I'm delighted to be joined this evening by WBO European Super Flyweight Champion, Kaizi Kadimi. How are you, Kaizi? Hey, John, I'm good. Thank you. Thank you for having me. No worries, mate. Thanks for coming on. Well, look, um, lots to talk about. You're coming up soon on a massive uh, Carl Frampton card, uh, defending your title and fighting for another one. So I'm going to come on to that in a minute. But before we do, I thought maybe we could get a bit of an introduction from you. Um, I know that you've come via the way of Afghanistan and you moved over here when you were young. So maybe you could tell us a little bit about what brought you over and what got you into boxing, Kaizi, if that's OK. Sure, of course. Uh, I mean, um, you know, I, I was born in 1994 in uh, Kabul, Kabul, Afghanistan, and uh, you know, the Taliban just took over, so it was a uh, it was a crazy war at that time, and you know my family wasn't safe at all there. Um, so we became a we start beco uh, becoming a refugee at 1998. We left Afghanistan. We start we're going towards Pakistan, um, and we were there for three years. Um, you know, and we were still we're trying to find the life there, but we, you know people were still coming knocking at our door, and was causing problem for for my family and. Um, so we had my older brother here and one of my uncle and um, they wanted us to come to UK and that's where our journey started. I mean, it took us about two years. We went countries to countries, you know, because um, it was a big group so we, we couldn't pay for the, for the airplane ticket to get on here. You know, it's very expensive uh, when, you, when you're from that side and, um, and obviously visa-wise and all that. So it was impossible. So, I mean, uh, yeah, so um, like it was a group of eight of us. We left and we came towards... Um, we went towards Russia, so we crossed many countries to get to Russia. And then once we were in Russia, we were, was, we was there for about six months, five months, I'm not sure, about that long. And we was like in one flat, just hiding away until, um, you know, the, the traffickers moved us somewhere else. Uh, um, it, was, it was like in, in, in Russia, we wasn't living a normal life. We was in one flat and we couldn't go outside. We were stuck there. Food had to come to us. We stayed there. And that was like for five, six months. And then slowly we made our way towards uh, Germany. So we crossed many countries like Slovakia, Romania, the countries that are to Germany. And um, yeah, and every, like, it wasn't like we just walking during daytime. It was, we were was, we was traveling during nighttime so the people don't see us, so the police don't see us because the police there are actually very brutal towards refugees. And uh, it's not like the police is here. I mean, the police are a million times better here. Um, there, there's, they don't have no human right. They beat the hell out of you. And, you know, I mean, recently, if you look online, many, many refugees killed by the police in the death. And um, that's one thing we was um, we were scared of, not getting caught. And, you know, and obviously the, traf the traffickers, they, they were scared not getting caught as well because they would get a very, very bad sentence plus a lot of beating. So, um, yeah, it was, it, was a, it was like, it was, it was traveling fear. So it was, it was a, but I was young, I was uh, around six, six and a half. And um, once we got to Germany, we stayed there for six because my family was like, I think that's it. Like Germany is the place we can't, we can't no longer travel and, you know, have suffered that much that we've already come out to stay in Germany. But um, when, once we stayed, we literally gave ourselves to Germany government saying, I want to stay here. But then my dad's mind, our aim and our goal was to get to UK and that's, that's, that's where we're going to go. That's how we started the journey. We wouldn't be in Germany. So we stayed for Germany for six, seven months and, um, you know, slowly made our way to, to towards UK. So we went to France and from Paris, we jumped on lorries to get here. And, you know, and it, it's, it's and they, when they put on lorries, it's like luck. If, if that, it's, that, it's your luck. If the lorry goes towards UK, it's your luck. If not, then you go somewhere else and you start banging the lorries to call the police and the police takes you back to the camp so people have been trying them lorries for like years and two years when we was in the camp so we was lucky to get on on, on our third try to get and um, yeah i mean wow what a, a story a i mean you're only young but your recollection of that well as i can imagine i can only imagine it it's very clear so well look, you you arrived in the uk which is great for us because you're now fighting for uh, for britain which is brilliant so brings yeah. us on to the the boxing scene now so you're up to eight and oh as i said you're the current wbo champion you're you're out fighting on a huge carl frampton card defending that belt and fighting for the ibf belt uh in a couple of weeks but firstly tell us a little bit about your career so far because those eight fights i think all eight fights have been at york hall is that right yeah i mean um uh when i signed in first i signed in with steve goodwin as a as a manager and um there was the i didn't know how bo how boxing how a lot of politics so when i find the trainer johnny Ames and things you know they, they work together signed up 
signing with John Ames as a manager and a coach. And, uh, you know, he, John Ames done a great hell of a job for me. He started my career. We was a small hole sh- uh, fire, small hole fires. And we had about a fourth up to, no, fifth fight straight all at your call. And then our sixth fight was on uh, MTK, MTK show, on a seven, seven and eight fight back to your call. Um, and, you know, it was like 2000, I think 2018 it was. It was literally, we couldn't get no fight towards 2018, end of 2018. Like almost for a year we didn't get no fight it was because super flat was so hard to get opponent even if one was an overweight and um you know getting sent back off by um by the border boxing and get, you know the, the fight cancelled our opponent you know we had a couple of opponents pulled out and they had the fight it was so hard it was just at that time it was like only six super fly at that time so it wasn't when you super flyer at that time so but um yeah we were, and then it was very hard, but once we got our A5 now, we you know we we are there, we can get many more fights now. As in you know, time with Frank Warren says it's, it's a great opportunity. Yeah, well look, this is this is a good step up now. So you're you're fighting on that Frank Warren card. I think it's your first time on proper mainstream TV and you're quite high up the card because there's two belts on the line. What do you know about the opponent, yeah. Casey? Hi Jazz. What do you know about him? Um, I know he's a he's a tough tough opponent. He's not a walkover opponent. I, I can't I can't uh, you know I can't think of him being as a walkover opponent. He's, he always prepares himself to give a fight, and he's you know he fought his last fight was against Harvey Horn, who he gave a great fight. Harvey Horn is a spectacular boxer, so very skillful, very nice kid, and you know they both box, and it was a very close fight, and Harvey Harvey got the win, and uh, you know he, I know he's just a still Midland champion, and um, you know he wants to come and win everything, so. It's a chance for him to win everything. So I know he's going to bring his best and he's he's going to bring his A-class game. And um, and I'm, I'm, I'm fully prepared for that. And I think that will bring the best out of me. Mm. So providing you do come through it, you then got to start. I know you might not want to start looking ahead just yet. And a lot of fighters I speak to, they like to keep quite grounded on the basis that if you start thinking of the next fight, it could go wrong in this one. But surely you must have your eye on, if you had two European belts, you've got to start looking at domestically, maybe Cal Yafai. He's probably looked upon as the main Brit at that weight. And then even further on behind world level. What what does that make you think about a fight like that? Yeah, I mean... Uh, definitely, I mean, like I said, I've I've set myself um, a, a performance. Uh, if I if I if I pull, if I pull that performance, that I have set myself. I would definitely call one of the bigger super super flyweight name out there. Um, you know, there's some great talent super flyweight. Don't get me wrong, there's some really talented guys out there, and that's the guys I want to face. So if I pull out the performance that I need to pull out, I mean, it's been a while since I've been in the ring, so since 2019, and if I can pull out the performance that we were set to pull out. Uh, to put um, definitely, I'll call up one of the bigger names, and, um, and everyone has to tune in to the fight and uh, watch the performance and watch the surprise. Hopefully, we'll certainly be doing that, Casey. What about the upcoming um, big fight uh, across the other side of the water at the same weight? Uh, Estrada's fighting uh, Chocolito again. They fought about I don't know oh. about ten years ago. Who do you think wins that one? Yeah, yeah. oh, that's going to be a great fight. But I think um, Estrada got a lot of gas in him still and I think chocolate or is you know he put a good performance like, uh, against Cali Fire but I don't think that work rate that Estrada puts in I don't think Ch- chocolate is going to keep up uh, keep up with it at this age and this time uh, but definitely two great world champion you know and um, two are, I think both uh, Hall of Fame of Fires man they, they, they've put a lot of they've put a lot of work and a lot of um, blood into to the Super Flower so definitely I think they will be a Hall of Fame at Super Flower Mm. And back to yourself, back on the actual upcoming night that's coming. Are you a bit disappointed that you can't fight in front of fans? I know you're on TV, which is great, but sure that you've got a lot of support that would want to come and watch that fight. Definitely. I mean, I've got a lot of support. We just, um, you know, this is the first time where the, my, 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 my motherland, Afghanistan, has uh, picked up the fight about it and they, they've all over, and it's been all over media. And uh, a lot of people from UK, they want to, they want to. And people from Afghanistan, they want to fly over and watch the fight. But uh, it's unfortunate we can't win pandemic. So, um, well, you know, but it's, I'm a fighter. Like I said, um, if it's a garage fight, it's not a problem. I have that mental mentality. I, I, you know, uh, I would love my, for my fans to be there. But if it's not, I know they're going to be watching it live. That's a great thing. It's a great platform. And uh, I'm just going to do my fight and get the win, hopefully. 
Yeah, very grounded. It sounds like you're well prepared. Well, look, after you've had your fight, um, hopefully for you, you come through and you've got both those belts. I'm sure you dust yourself down and maybe watch the main fight. What do you think Carl Frampton's chances are? He's going to try to become the first Irish three-weight world champion against Jamal Herring. Do you think Carl's got a good chance and going to win that? You know, um, I, I hope uh, Carl, Carl Frampton pulls it off. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm for him. I just think uh, Jamal just got that he's, you know, he's very tall. He's um, he fights the long range always, and he's got a great camp. He's got, um, you know, uh, Stevenson. He's got Crawford. He's got all the great fighters near him, and I think he learned a lot of more tricks by being around them. So it's going to be a great fight, man. I hope, I hope Carl Frampton uh, pulls it out and you know pulls out the win. Um, I'm rooting for Carl Frampton, but I think James might might take it. You know. OK, well, look, it's, it's another 50-50 fight. And I think the whole the, the card itself, yeah. which I spoke to another fighter earlier today um, who's on the card as well, Sam Noakes, and he's two undefeated, undefeated lightweights going out there. So, as usual, Frank's put a great card on for us. Uh, and we look forward to seeing you, Kaizen. Well, Definitely. maybe after the fight, we'll uh, pop down and see you down Thank in East you. London if you've got them belts and catch up with you doing a bit of sparring and working out on that. Definitely. Good luck on the night, Kaizen, and we'll see you soon. Definitely. Da. Cheers, mate. Thank you very much for having me. Definitely. No, no, Thank you. Time. See you. Cheers. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to hit the like, subscribe, and share. As always, if you want to support us to the next level, head over to the patreon.com backslash the boxing voice. We have tons of exclusive from Border Wars, from Tidal, betting shows, the list goes on and on and on. But in addition to that, if you guys have questions for fighters, trainers, and promoters, this is where you can submit them. We will run out, get these questions answered, and put it back on the show just for you guys. Appreciate it. Peace.